Welcome back everyone, Jake here. Currently, we're on day 72 of Russia's disastrous invasion of Ukraine. And in this video, let's talk about Chinese participation or lack of participation so far in this conflict. This article is titled, United States Relieved as China Appears to Heed Warnings on Russia. This article is from Reuters. And two months after warning that Beijing appeared poised to help Russia in its fight against Ukraine, senior U.S. officials say they have not detected any overt Chinese military and economic support for Russia. So at the moment, this must be driving Vladimir Putin crazy that China is not coming to his defense, coming to his aid. So United States officials told Reuters in recent days they remain wary about China's long-standing support for Russia in general, but that the military and economic support that they worried about has not come to pass. So this is pretty extraordinary that U.S. officials are putting out these statements saying, basically, thanks China, thanks for not getting involved and supporting Vladimir Putin in this war in Ukraine. So to put the relationship between Russia and China in perspective, let's watch about 50 seconds from this uh, news clip from Al Jazeera. Nearly half a century ago, these two neighbors fought a brief border war. But the latest China-Russia military drills show that hostility is now in the past. In this mock battle, the enemy is unnamed. It's a military partnership that's strengthening, thanks in part to both countries' worsening relations with the United States. If you say it's a marriage of convenience, that underestimates the, the depth of their shared interests. And of course, the biggest one is uh, opposing America and undermining America and the West. And that's extremely important in, in explaining the strength of the uh, current China-Russia relationship. 10,000 soldiers are taking part in the exercise, which will last for five days. The 30th such war games since 2003. Russia's President Vladimir Putin and China's leader Xi Jinping recently boasted that their country's relationship was now unbreakable. Their country's relationship is now unbreakable. So let's, let's, let's dissect this news clip a little bit. Did you hear that, them say that Russia and China have done 30 war game exercises together since 2003? What else happened in 2003? Let's think about the history and the relationship between the old Soviet Union and communist China. They shared a border in Central Asia. They shared a border in the Far East. These two countries were geopolitical rivals and they had territorial disputes along their border. The Soviet Union collapsed. Russia uh, now only shared a border basically in the Far East. But 2003 is significant because that is when the United States invaded Iraq. The Bush doctrine of spreading democracy around the world with our military. Who might oppose spreading democracy around the world? And that would be Vladimir Putin and authoritarian Russia and uh, communist China. So these two have been seeking to uh, healed, old, heal old wounds and uh, get it together in order to form a counterweight or a counterbalance to the United States and NATO. How has this relationship been going? Well, let's talk about this lead up to the invasion of Ukraine because Vladimir Putin, I think, had to go to China in order to notify in person Xi Jinping what he was planning. Vladimir Putin has been in planning to invade Ukraine for years, but 2022 is the year he said, I'm going to do it. So prior to the Olympics being held in China, even though Vladimir Putin's health might be declining, even though he's a germaphobe, even though he doesn't like traveling in the age of COVID, he made an in-person trip to Beijing in order to tell Xi Jinping in person, I'm doing it this year. I'm actually going to invade Ukraine. And their relationship is tenuous because China does not view Russia as an equal. When you think about the size of their economy, China's economy is 10 times larger than Russia. China's population is 10 times larger than Russia. 
China is a rising power, Russia is a declining power. Russia wants a co-equal military alliance with China. China's the one who is hesitant, saying, uh, you're not looking so great over there, Russia. Your economy is stagnant, your population is aging. So Vladimir Putin wanted to show off. He wanted to demonstrate to China how to do it, how to invade a country, expand your territory, uh, you know, show the West who, who, who's the big bad guy on the block. Not going so well for Russia. So two weeks into the conflict, two weeks into the war, these reports were coming out in March that Russia was asking China for help. This war in Ukraine was only supposed to last three to seven days tops, but after two weeks, they were running out of food, they were running out of fuel, their logistics were terrible. So Russia was asking China for help, either military or economic aid. And the concern two months ago was that China would participate. China would come to Russia's aid. Here's an article about Russian logistics are so bad, its military is begging China for Chinese MREs. Uh, there's been lots of documented evidence about Russian soldiers uh, eating either expired MREs or not being given enough food uh, for their incursion into Ukraine, and they were just expected to basically rob local grocery stores, steal food from local people's homes. So the immediate threat that the West put on China is that if they help Russia with Russia's war in Ukraine, then the West potentially could put economic sanctions on China as well. China immediately said that it wanted to steer clear of U.S. sanctions over Russia's invasion of Ukraine, they basically adopted a neutral stance. They said, we're not going to condemn Russia, we understand Russia's point of view, but we also don't want to upset the European Union or the uh, United States, so we're just not going to participate in this conflict at all. And what Beijing fears most right now is the economic sanctions that Russia is experiencing potentially could be put on them and their economy as well. This article is from May 4th, but it's being reported that Beijing has ordered a stress test and fears of Russia-style sanctions. So what would be the impact on the Chinese economy should similar sanctions that have been put on Russia were also applied to China? And Russia is not China. So Russia has taken a lot of steps since 2014 with their invasion of Crimea to basically protect and insulate themselves. They're basically just a petro state. They export oil and they use that money to buy goods and services. But Vladimir Putin has been saving money and planning for this, preparing for this. He knew that the sanctions were coming. He thought he would succeed in Ukraine. Sanctions would be put on him but that Russia would be fine in the long run. China has made no such preparations, so it's unfair to China to expect to sacrifice their economy to help Russia when they weren't given eight years to prepare for this, similar to how Russia has been doing. When you think about the total amount of trade between the United States and China, it's $615 billion. So China imports $164 billion from the United States and exports 450. So they're running a positive trade surplus of $285 billion. That's a lot of money every year to give up to help Russia. Same thing with the European Union. China does about $557 billion in trade. Even if the, the economic sanctions weren't, you know, as, as devastating as those put on Russia, even losing 10% of this uh, trade would be significant for the Chinese economy. Additionally, another interesting thing is that China buys a lot of U.S. Treasury securities. They currently own about $1 trillion in uh, American debt. Why does China do this? Uh, for one, it's a solid investment where you're getting your 3 to 4% a year or whatever on your money. But China buys U.S. debt as leverage. Here's a, here's, here, this explains it. Some analysts and investors fear China could dump these treasuries in retaliation and that this weaponization of its holdings would send interest rates higher, 
potentially hurting economic growth. So China, for 30 years, has been buying U.S. debts to have leverage over the United States. The fear that if they dump these bonds on the bond market, interest rates would soar, this would cause the stock market and the economy to go down. But what if China gets into, a, you know, participates in, in the war in the Ukraine, and then the United States just cancels this debt? They say, we have the legal authority, we sanction you, this $1 trillion, we know the serial numbers on all of these bonds, they're all just voided, they're all just canceled, we're just going to eliminate this debt. That wouldn't work with China's plan. How much U.S. debt does uh, the Russian government hold? None. But some of their private residents, you know, it's estimated they own about $4.5 So that's basically nothing. Russia was not exposed. Okay, let's now pivot and talk about historical claims, because ultimately that is what is Russia's justification for going into Ukraine. They say Ukraine has always been part of the Russian Empire, the Ukrainian state is an artificial construct, and it doesn't actually exist. So let's talk about the Chinese Empire under the Qing Dynasty, and this was China's borders as of 1820. This was only 200 years ago. When you talk about Russian history and the Russian Empire, they're making territorial claims going back 200 years and, you know, events like the Crimea War. So, 1820 was right before uh, China's century of humiliation kicked off, in which European powers basically were dumping opium onto Chinese markets in exchange for tea and other, uh, other, other, other trade goods. And they basically got tens of millions of Chinese people addicted to opium, addicted to drugs, in order to weaken the empire. And then they carved it up with their spheres of influence. So you have British-controlled territory, German-controlled territory, uh, French-controlled territory, the Portuguese were in Macau, J Japan was expanding, and from the north, you had Russia coming down. Russia was gobbling up Chinese territory. And you'll notice uh, 200 years ago, the Chinese Empire expanded to the Pacific coast, the Kiwi Islands, Vladivostok didn't exist, and Russia, through a series of border skirmishes and wars, took this land from China. They cut off the Chinese mainland uh, from having access to the Pacific Ocean on the east side of the Korean Peninsula. So China has beef, has history with Russia, and they would benefit a lot from Russia declining in military supremacy, declining in economic power. They've been pumping tens of billions or hundreds of billions of dollars into their Belt and Road Initiative in order to develop trade, develop infrastructure across the Asian continents. So here are some of the routes related to their Belt and Road Initiative. And yes, they've got uh, some trade routes going to Moscow. That makes sense. But you'll notice that they're really focusing on these Central Asian countries going through the Caspian, going through the Caucasus with Georgia, trying to get to the Black Sea. And potentially, they could have linked up with Odessa and used Ukraine in order to get into Poland. So, Russia, in a way, is trying to contain China, and China knows this. If Russia were to take back the Caucasus, take back Ukraine and Moldova, get a, a more uh, firm control over the north shores of the Black Sea, this is, in a way, Russia attempting to contain China's uh, global influence and global rising power. China knows this. So we have to consider, you know, the bigwigs in Beijing. How do they really think? How do they really feel about Russia? And if Russia gets their ass kicked in Ukraine, if the Russian economy falls by 50%, if uh, Russia's influence politically over Central Asia and the Caucasus and Eastern Europe even declines, is this a strategic uh, advantage for the Chinese people? And I argue it is. Now, is China going to uh, invade Outer Manchuria and try and get this territory back from the Qing Dynasty? 
not not immediately. I think things would have to deteriorate in Russia further, but perhaps Russia is going to have to strike a deal. They they might just become desperate for assistance and aid at some point that they might strike a deal, or if the Russian state just politically completely collapses, China would move into this territory uh, for the sake of global st stability. They would want to go in there and secure all those nuclear weapons if the command and control, command and control structure <laughs> for uh, the Russian Federation just completely collapsed. So this dance between Russia and China is going to continue. I find it fascinating that China has done nothing to help Russia in the next two months. As the war in Ukraine keeps going poorly for Russia, I just don't see the benefits for China getting involved. And doing nothing right now is Beijing's best move. Okay, that's all for this update video. If you found it informative, give me a thumbs up. It really helps out with the algorithm. If you know something I don't, let me know in a comment down below. I love hearing from you guys. Till the next video, take care, be safe.